Hello! In this video we're going to be reviewing equations and graphs of lines. Um, this may or may not be a review. I have to admit when um, I was looking at this chapter to get ready for this video I realized it had been a long time since I'd seen any of this. And the last time I remembered a slope was, isn't that something that a hill has? So we're going to go ahead and just work through one of the recommended problems. This is typically something you would see maybe somewhere around the halfway point of your finite math career. Um, I know this is handled in the first couple of weeks of uh, D117 at IU, and it's happen it happens roughly right after midterms in 118. Um, so let's just get to it. So we are looking at a problem that one of the instructors has recommended to us. This is problem 23 in section 5.1, Review of Equations and Graphs of Lines, in the book Finite Mathematics by Daniel P. Mackey and Maynard Thompson. And I thought this was a fun one um, because it has all the different things that you're going to see in these kinds of problems. And actually, um, <coughs> you're not going to explicitly see a problem like this on a, on a midterm or a final. What you're going to see are using all of the things that you learn here. And, and we're going to see that in the next couple of sections, especially when you get into matrices. Um, if you're not comfortable with some of this, this algebra stuff, these crazy lines, things get a little messy. So let's go ahead and work through problem 23. First things first, let's read through it. Suppose a linear equation relates to the cost of operating a duplicating machine to the number of copies produced. The cost for a month in which 20,000 copies are made is $565, and the cost for a month in which 35,000 copies are made is $940. If 14,000 copies are made in a month, find the monthly operating cost. Well, what's my first step? My first step is to write everything I know down. So let's get to that step. So when I see these linear equation problems, the first thing I like to do is write out a chart and that kind of helps me pick my x's and y's and keep everything straight. So let's go ahead and do that. So what do what is related to what else? Well, we've got the operating cost, so we're just going to call that cost, and that's compared, I'm just going to draw a line there, this is how I like to do it, you can do it a couple of different ways, number of copies. Okay, so you know, I think that makes sense. Let's go ahead and fill out our chart. So let's see, the cost for a month in which 20,000 copies were printed, well that's, that is a lot of copies. 20,000 copies was $565, okay. And the cost for a month in which 35,000 copies, that's even more copies, was printed, how much was that? That was $940. These people are spending a lot of money on copies. So what do we want to find out? We want to find out if we print 14,000 copies, must not have been a final that month, huh? How much would it cost? So one thing I always like to do is write down everything I know. We've done that, but there's some other things that we've learned in this chapter that are going to be really handy. And you really need to memorize these, and those are our two formulas. So let's go ahead and write our two formulas down, and uh, then we'll move on with the problem. So the first one is, this is your basic linear uh, equation formula. So you've got y equals m of x, or m times x, and m here is slope plus b. And uh, this plus here, I just want to make a quick note, this plus here, you don't really have to worry about it being, you know, actually a plus. Sometimes it's a minus. We're just throwing it in there right now. Um, m is slope, b is how much it's offset, so just a handy formula. And, I, and this alone doesn't really help us out you know, this is a lot of variables. So what can we put in here? Well, we know another formula that gives us the slope, and that is the slope is equal to y1 minus y, whoops, actually, it's the other way around, because you don't want, you don't want it to be reversed, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So between those two formulas, we're in pretty good shape, so let's go ahead and start plugging numbers in, see what our x is, see what our y is, and, and I think we'll, we'll breeze right through this. Our first step is trying to figure out which is our x and which is our y. And, you know, it's relatively arbitrary. Um, you could solve this either way. I just kind of like to do it in the order they've given us, so we're going to make our cost our x and our number of copies our y. So, relatively arbitrary, no matter which way you do it, it's not really important. So, you know, this 
doesn't seem too useful until we realize that we have a lot of numbers here and we could figure out the slope of this value. So, you know, what's y2 minus y1? Well, m, the slope, is equal to, and let's see if we can see them both, 35,000, whoops, 35,000 minus 20,000, and that is over 940 subtracted, uh, subtracting from that 565. And, uh, you know, we do some math here, and what is that, 15, 15,940, I'm, I'm, I am not being able to do math in my head today. So that's 940 minus 565 is 375. And this is equal to 40. So our slope is equal to 40. Okay, well, now we've got to figure out, so we know y equals 40x plus b. Now we've got to figure out our b, and the easiest way to do this is to plug in some values that we know and get, get the stuff. So let's plug in where y equals 20,000, right? That's the that's the case where they print 20,000 copies equals 40 times and the cost, the x, was 565 plus b. Well, okay. Um, we can solve this, right? 20,000 equals, and uh, this is 22,600. Kind of weird, but, you know, I'll buy it. B, and uh, so we subtract both sides by 22,600, and we get negative 2,600 equals B. Well, okay. So B equals negative 2,600. So let's go ahead and continue plugging this into our formula. So we have Y equals 40X, and remember I said that plus is kind of arbitrary, so we're going to do minus 2600, and that's that's a s minus because this is a negative number. You know, we could do plus negative. I don't think you need that, but if that makes you feel more comfortable, do it. And uh, so let's go ahead and plug our values in and get the answer here. So scrolling back up, um, what are we looking for? Well, we know our y. It's 14,000. We don't know our x. So we can plug this in. So y is equal to 14,000 equals 40 x minus 2600 and then you add 2600 to both sides and you should be seeing right now that this is a lot of algebra the stuff looks kinda scary really not that bad just lots of algebra and you divide both sides by 40 and you get x is equal to 415 and that is our answer so let's let's step back for a second and uh, talk about what we did here So let's go all the way up to the top. The very first thing I did, and what I would always recommend doing, is I wrote down everything I know. So first we made a chart with the values they gave us. Typically they don't give you numbers for no reason. Write them down. And then we went ahead and we wrote the two formulas that you need to know for linear equations. And not kidding, put these on flashcards. Memorize these. You're going to see these over and over and over again really handy to know offhand. Then we just plugged and played. So we knew we had some values. We had uh, two different values for y. We had two different values for x. This let us get a slope, which we plugged back into our equation. Well, now we had a value for y. We had a value for x. We had a slope so we could figure out b, and we did that right here. Then we plugged everything in, did some algebra, and got our answer not so bad. It takes a little bit of thought to set it up the way you want it. Do some practice and I think you'll get pretty comfortable pretty fast.